Student leaders played a key role in developing the new code of conduct for the Boston Public Schools. They recently took their mission one step further by developing a phone app with information about student rights. To tell us about the project is a member of the Boston Student Advisory Council, Khalees Osula. Thank you very much for being with us, Thank Khalees. Thank you. Uh, go back a bit to uh, the code of conduct in the schools and uh, how the Student Advisory Council made a difference in that. Uh, so our goal as BSAC or Boston Student Advisory Council um, was that we realized that students don't know their rights and a part of having your rights is also being responsible for your actions. Um, so BSAC was like, okay, well, there's a lot of things in the code of conduct that we don't necessarily agree with and that we don't feel that benefit students to the point where um, things change. Um, so what we did is we, some key issues, uh, one of our, our biggest ones that all students love is the cell phone policy. So it used to be a three strike rule and with that three strike rules, the first time you get to, your phone was taken away till the end of the day by an administrator or a teacher. The second time was um, your parent had to come up and the third time was that you don't get it back till the end of the school year. Now there's a lot of issues with that. The first issue is that, you know, parents, Working parents don't have time out of their schedule to come and, you know, uh, debate with your administrator about your phone and, and scold you and do all of that, you know, while they can be at work. The um, second issue is that a lot of students have cell phones for emergencies. Now, if the school takes, you know, your cell phone away for the year, who's to say that, A, your family can afford to buy you a new one, and B, that, you know, you'll be fine with that one. Um, in this modern day and time, 911 is, it takes three seconds to call 911. So there was some issues around that. Um, and also uh, just not being able to, um, well, we just found that it was a huge issue for students as well and that it was unfair. Um, and there's a couple other ones around uh, physical education and um, the mandates around physical education as well. I imagine one, one of the concerns, uh, and probably still is a concern, is uh, uh, the rate of suspensions yes. and and looking for alternative yes. ways of disciplining students. Yes. Um, w w what do you see that's new that seems to maybe work better? Um, well, there's a couple alternatives. Uh, one way we seek, like, uh, say to, uh, because uh, in a lot of BPS schools, uh, a fight is an automatic three-day suspension. Um, drugs is an automatic suspension. I think for a week or plus. So it's, uh, we were working with the Dignity in Schools campaign. We um, surveyed at different uh, train stations around Boston, Ashmont Fields, no, sorry, Ashmont Fields Corner, Dudley, Forest Hills, and another one. But while interviewing, we found that there were so many students and parents. This is who we interviewed. We interviewed BPS students and parents, and they said, oh, yeah, I did it. I did it again, or I fought again, or I was rolling dice and I got suspended. And then, okay, did you do it again? Yeah, I did it again. So it's like if you're consistently, constantly suspending the student for three days for each time, Let's say the student gets suspended four times. It's uh, twelve. What? It's twelve times uh, out of the year, so they miss twelve school days. It just—it's a pattern. And so if you're suspended so much that you're not in school, then you dropping out of school won't be an issue because you were never there a lot to begin with. So I said, if a student has an issue with drugs, if a student has an issue with fighting, so there's obviously anger if they're fighting. There's obviously something deeper than either uh, if they come into school intoxicated or if they're selling. Um, drugs in school, uh, there's obviously a deeper issue. Um, and suspending a student for a week or three days is not the way to solve that because if some, if a student's means of income, because maybe, so let's say they're 13 or 14 and they're not really old, they're not old enough to work with, um, to, to work. So it's like, okay, but I can sell drugs. And then it's okay, all right, you can't, you know, you're suspended for a week and then you know, they're suspended for a week and then they come back and they're still doing the same thing because it's their only means of income and to help support their family. Now, it's not right. However, there's something deeper. And if the school really wants to fix the issue, then they need to go deep and say and talk to the student. There's counseling. There's um, there's a couple programs, actually, where students can go and, and talk, uh, talk about it. But the school has to take the initiative and seek for those resources rather than just using suspension as an easy way to suspend the student or um, temporarily get rid of the state. Uh, well, the student. if more students and their families knew about the, these rights, yes. I guess then, then they could also take the initiative yes. and, and come to the school feeling right. this is something that the school really ought to right. be helping them with. Right. So we have a couple of 
pamphlets that we pass out. Um, and lately we've been going around to schools. We've had a team of stu uh, uh, the students that uh, are represented at BSAC and we have a team of uh, staff that support us. And we go to the schools and you know we spread the word on the app and they're like, oh wow, I didn't know this. Like uh, another huge thing is sometimes uh, a teacher will, or an administrator will say, oh, like, we're sending you home for the day. I have a lot of friends who's like, oh, I, I, you know, I was sent home for the day. I was like, or I was suspended and their parent never came up. I was like, that is against policy for a school or administrator to suspend you for any amount of time uh, and not have your parent come up or um, a legal guardian. What's the importance of, of making this information available on a cell phone app? Well, so many people use their cell phones. Every day, students probably send around 200 to 300 text messages, maybe more. Go on Facebook, they go on Instagram. BSAC has a Facebook. BSAC, I, th I think we might have an Instagram. We have a Twitter. So we have all these accounts to try and stay um, up to speed with all you know the technology and stuff that's, um, that students are using. Um, so we put it on the app because we realized that Everyone's always on their cell phone, old and young, um, and this is a good tool. Even if you're, you know, in the third grade and your parent has a cell phone, they could have the app in case an incident happens. If the student feels that their rights have been violated, exactly at the bell when school's over, they can say, go back to the teacher and say, "Well, technically, <coughs> excuse me, technically, well, um, I felt uh, like for the homework policy, for example." Um, Teachers have to give you work pertaining for homework pertaining to the lesson for the current the current lesson or for the next day they can't give you busy work. A lot of students feel that they felt that they're giving busy work and I can have a case and I, I can go to my teacher and say um, excuse me uh, Mr. Uh, or Mrs. Um, I feel that this what you're, the work that you're giving me is busy work and not necessarily work that's pertaining to um, the the lesson today or if it is pertaining to the lesson tomorrow can you please explain to me how if they can't explain to you how then it's you know you're going against policy once again uh, because it's uh, busy work but having the cell phone app and having being uh, and being able to reach <clears throat> so many students there's a lot of students in BPS, but I think as of today, we have 700 plus students who have visited and downloaded the app, um, bostonstudentrights.org. Um, you can www. Make sure you do www. Um, and you go to the website and you save it as a home page. Um, it's not currently on the Apple Store, but it will be on the Play Store for Androids. Right. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Kalise Asula from the Boston Student Advisory Council. We'll have more news in just a moment.